Hey guys, welcome back to Math Principles. We're going to take another look at factoring quadratics today. So we've been looking at factoring, and we said factoring is writing an expression as the product of its factors. Um, so we looked at a whole bunch of those examples, and we said the very first thing that we always want to do when we're trying to factor is try to bring out a GCF. If there's something that we can use to divide every term and give us smaller numbers, that's going to make our job a little bit easier. Then we looked at using this chart. Okay, if C is positive, we know that both of our factors get the same sign as BX, and we need to be able to add our outers and our inners to get that BX. We know that if our C term is negative, one's going to be plus, one's going to be minus, and the larger outer or inner gets the same sign as BX. But we won't know which one's larger until we test the numbers. We need to be able to subtract the outers and the inners to get that BX. Now, we looked at a whole bunch of examples. Okay, we looked at ones where we just factored as it was. We looked at ones where we brought out a GCF. We looked at ones where we couldn't just use X and X. We saw ones where we had to use maybe 2X and X. Then we looked at what happens when our B is equal to 0, and we have the difference of squares. We saw that if we have A squared minus B squared, we can factor that A plus B, A minus B. Then... We, uh, what we need to look at today is another special case. So we said in our very first one that for our quadratics, A could not equal 0. A, B, and C are integers, but A was not equal to 0. Last time we looked at what happens if B is 0. Today we're going to look at what happens when C is 0. So, if I look at this expression, I have x squared plus 8x. My c term isn't there. Okay, c is equal to 0. Now, if c is equal to 0, there's something, there's, this is actually going to be easier than we think. We're always going to start out the exact same way. We said the very first thing that we should always try to do is look for a GCF, something that divides both of those terms. And someone's going to look at that and say, well, there's nothing that divides both x squared and x. There's no number that divides them. And you're right about that. But what we said in the very first video of this was that we're not always going to have a number. We said a GCF is the greatest value that divides each of these terms. And what I see clear as day in each of these terms is an x. Both of those terms are divisible by x. So I'll write down an x open up a set of parentheses, and divide each term by x. x squared divided by x is just x. 8x divided by x is just 8. Okay, and if we need a quick explanation of that, x squared is x times x. If I divide that by x, a pair of x's are going to cancel, and all that's going to be left is x. If I have 8x, divided by x. This pair of x's are going to cancel, and all that's going to be left is 8. Now, we look at this and we try to factor what's left, but here's the catch, guys. This isn't x squared anymore. There's nothing left to factor. I have x times x squared. This expression is factored. If there's no constant term, all we have to do is bring out a GCF. Okay, but what's important is that that GCF is going to have to include the variable. Now, I could say it's going to have to include x, but it's not always going to be x that's getting factored. For ours, so far, they've all been x. And I've got to learn how to spell the word include here, apparently. Okay. Once we bring out that GCF, this is factored. GCF stands for greatest common factor. So when we bring out that GCF, that could be all we have to do. So take a look at 17 here. Okay. I look at both of these terms, and I notice that there is no C term. Okay. C is equal to 0. So I'm just going to focus on a GCF. So I want something that divides both of these terms. Well, I can recognize that they're both divisible by 3, but hopefully we can also see they're divisible by x. So 
So we write down that GCF, we open up a set of parentheses, and we divide every term by x, or excuse me, by 3x. So 3x squared divided by 3x, well, if we have to, guys, 3x squared is 3 times x times x. If I divide that by 3x, the 3's cancel, a pair of x's cancel, and all that's left is x. Okay, bring down that minus sign. And if I do 27 divided by x, well, if we have to, we can do that as well. Okay, 27 times x divided by 3x. These x's are going to cancel. And 27 divided by 3 is 9. And we're factored. Now, someone's going to look at this and say, well, that's the difference of squares. But guys, keep in mind, there's no squared on this x. It's just regular old x, not x squared. Once there's no more x squared, your expression's factored, and you're done. Okay? Let's take a look at number 18. Okay, number 18 over here, I have 4x minus 6x squared. So I want to look for a GCF. I notice that there is no C term. Here my C is 0. So I need something that divides both of these terms. Well, 4 and 6 are both divisible by 2, and each of these have an x. So they're divisible by 2x. So I write 2x, open up a set of parentheses, and divide each of these by 2x. Now, guys, if it helps, do the scratch work. Okay, 4x squared, excuse me, 4x divided by 2x. Those x's are going to cancel, and I just have 4 divided by 2, which is 2. Bring down that minus sign. 6x squared is 6 times x times x. If I divide that by 2 x, a pair of x's are going to cancel. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and I still have one of those x's. So this factors 2x times the quantity 2 minus 3x. There's no longer an x squared. This expression is factored. Okay, let's take a look at number 19. So number 19, I have 5x squared plus 11x. I recognize that there's no constant term, so I'm going to just look for a GCF. So I want something that divides both of these terms. So 5x squared and 11x. Well, there's no number that divides both of those. That's right. Okay, but they are both divisible by x. So I write down an x, I open up a set of parentheses, and I divide each term by x. Okay, 5x squared divided by x, a pair of x's cancel, and all that's left is 5x. 11x divided by x, the x is cancel, and what's left here is 11. There's no longer an x squared. This is a factored expression. Okay, take a look at this last one. 6x squared minus 24. I want something that divides both of these terms. Well, 6 and 24 are both divisible by 6 x squared and x are both divisible by x. So I write down that GCF, I open up a set of parentheses, and if we have to do a little bit of scratch work, we do a little bit of scratch work. 6x squared is 6 times x times x. Divide that by 6x. The 6 is cancel, a pair of x is cancel, and all that's left on top is that x. Bring down the minus sign. 24 times x divided by 6x. Well, a pair of x's cancel, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. So I have 6x times the quantity x minus 4. There's no longer an x squared in my expression. This is factored. So if we recognize that our c term is 0, if there's no constant term, all we have to do is bring out a GCF. Now, that GCF is going to include our variable. If we don't bring out a variable, we're still going to have an x squared, and we're not going to have something that's completely factored. Okay? So let's take a look at everything all together. 25x squared minus 81. So I look at this one, and I recognize that there is no bx term. b is equal to 0. Okay? So if b is equal to 0... That's the difference of squares. Okay, and the difference of squares, well, I always look for a GCF, but there isn't a GCF this time.
So the difference of squares, I need to look at what's A and what's B. So what am I squaring to get 25x squared? Well, to get 25, I square 5. To get x squared, I get x. What am I squaring to get 81? 9. So this is going to factor 5x plus 9, 5x minus 9. And there we go. Okay, example 22 here. Okay, I see 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. There's nothing missing here. I have all three terms. The first thing I want to do is bring out a GCF. All of these terms are divisible by 2. So I write down the 2 and divide each of those terms by 2. And I have 2 times the quantity, x squared minus x minus 6. I'll leave the 2 out front, get two sets of parentheses. In order to get x squared, I know these both have to start with x. Since my c term is minus, I know one of these is plus and one of them is minus, but I don't know which one's which until I put the numbers in. So my factors of 6 that I can use are 6 and 1, 3 and 2. Okay, so I'll sub those in until I find one that works. Let's start with 3 and 2. On the outside, we'll get 2x. On the inside, we'll get 3x. Okay, because my c term is negative, I need to be able to subtract these two and get minus 1x. Well, 3x minus 2x is positive 1x, but 2x minus 3x gives me that minus 1x. So these are the right numbers, they are in the right places. My larger outer or inner gets the same sign as bx. 3x is bigger, so it's going to get this minus sign. So I have x minus 3 and x plus 2. Leave that 2 out front, it's part of the factory, it's the GCF. Okay, number 23. Okay, take a look at these two, and I notice that c is equal to 0. Okay, so this means I'm just going to have a GCF. Okay, if C is equal to 0, you know all you have to do is bring out a GCF that includes that variable X. So I need a number that divides both 12X squared, excuse me, I need a value that divides both 12X squared and 16X. Well, those are both divisible by 4X. So I write down the GCF, open up a set of parentheses, and divide each of those terms by that 4x. Well, 12x squared is 12 times x times x. If I divide that by 4x, a pair of x's are going to cancel. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And I still have that other x. If I have 16x divided by 4x, a pair of x's cancel, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. So I have 4x times the quantity 3x minus 4. There's no longer an x squared. This expression is factored. Last one. 7x squared plus 18x plus 8. There's no GCF. There's nothing that divides all three of those terms. So I go to my two sets of parentheses. In order to get 7x squared, these quantities need to start with 7x and x. Okay, then we need to just try numbers on the outside and on the inside until we get a pair that works. So my factors of 8 are 8 and 1, and 4 and 2. Okay, well, the bad news here is we just have to guess and check. Okay, so let's try 8 and 1. Okay, on the outside, 7 times 1 is 7x. On the inside, 8 times x is 8x. Okay, well, I need to be able to add these two and get 18x. Doesn't seem like that's going to work. 8x and 7x gives me 15x. It's close, but not quite. Okay, so we'll try maybe what happens if we switch them around. If I do 1 and then 8. Well, on the outside, I'm going to get, whoa, that's 56x. I don't think I'm going to be able to get 18x from 56x. Those are pretty far apart. So I don't think 8 and 1 are going to be the ones that we'll use. Let's try 4 and 2. On the outside, 7x times 2 is 14x. On the inside, 4 times x is 4x. Now, my c term is positive, so I need to be able to add these two to get that 18x. 4x plus 14x gives me that 18x. They're the right numbers. They're in the right places. And since my c term is positive, I know both of these factors get the same sign as bx. So 
Bring out a GCF if you can. Okay, go to your two sets of parentheses. First terms have to multiply together to give you that AX squared. Your lasts have to multiply to give you that C. Your outers and your inners. If your C term is positive, you need to be able to add your outers and your inners to get the X. If your C term is negative, you need to be able to subtract your outers and your inners to get that BX. If your B is zero, I can tell you right now, for our purposes, we're looking at the difference of squares. So figure out what you're squaring to get AX squared, figure out what you're squaring to get B, or excuse me, to get C, and you'll have A plus B, A minus B. If your C is equal to zero, you're looking at a GCF. Okay, just bring out a GCF that includes that variable. Okay, write it down, open up one set of parentheses, and divide each term by that GCF. Every single quadratic can be factored using that chart. But if you have B equals to zero, try to factor it using uh, the difference of squares. If your C term is zero, all you're going to be able to do is bring out that GCF. 